This is Hero. How's everyone doing today? So today I'm going to be discussing advanced information on Libra or the seventh house. Okay. Now, whenever we think of Libra or the seventh house, we tend to think of a certain things that is your spouse, the person you're dating or any friends, possibly family in your life, but mostly these things. Okay. When it comes to astrology in general, as you know, um, many people just care about the materialistic outcomes, right? And if you've been watching my video for some time, you know I care more about the spiritual karmic impact that astrology has on our life. Now, if you notice the title of this video, it does say, it should say somewhere like advanced information or something like that. Much of the beginner level information that you guys have might have already heard, I'm not going to cover that too much in this video, okay? Because you guys can find that stuff anywhere. It's, and it, it's usually more materialistic in nature. This will be more of my own spiritual perspective on some of the advanced energies with this sign. Now, when it comes to Libra or the seventh house, what is one thing we notice? The main planet of karma, Saturn, gets exalted in Libra. Okay, this is very, very important. Why? Saturn is the planet of karma. Now, we know that where a planet gets exalted, it does not own that sign okay so the point the fact that saturn gets exalted in libra shows that there is a very 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 high karmic weight on the seventh house in general or libra which is true this is why a lot of us care so much about seventh house things however we need to be aware and understand that the seventh house is i mean sorry libra is owned by venus and the seventh house venus is the natural indicator or the main indicator of the seventh house this shows us two things. Before I touch on those two things, I would like to make a point. I'm making these sign videos, advanced technique videos from a spiritual perspective. Why? Because each of these signs, energies, or houses are crucial in cleaning up energetically. Why? Because the, the better each house or each sign is functioning, the more the... the the more properly the flow will be energetically sign wise or house wise. Okay. This is why let's just say you have a, a factory. Okay. And there's certain parts, right? There's someone making something, sh boxing, shipping, wh whatever. Or, or let's just say you have a restaurant. There's someone taking the money, taking orders, um, making the food, cleaning, serving, whatever. One of those areas is messed up. The restaurant or the factory is not going to do so well. Okay. It's a, uh, I know there's small businesses and stuff where everyone's doing everything, but just in general, if one area is not functioning well, it's, it's not going to do that well. It's the same thing here. If one sign or one house is not functioning that well, it's going to affect everything a lot. Okay. Um, it's like a snowball effect though. So if you, if you clean up one area, it'll slowly clean up everything, which is good. Now, so getting back to the point of the video, Libra or the seventh house. So there's a huge, huge karmic weight here. Now, I just said Saturn gets exalted here, but also Libra is owned by the planet Venus. This shows us two things. One, the planet Venus represents enjoyment, okay? Proper enjoyment, like a healthy level of enjoyment. We obviously want to enjoy with other people, right? So this energy is going to be there. But for those of us who are spiritually elevated, and this is not like any judgment or anything like that. This is just if you're interested in this stuff. If, there's, if you are spiritually elevated, I would encourage you to harness the exalted energies of Saturn when it's in Libra. Now, I know what you might be saying. Oh, I don't have Saturn in Libra or Saturn's not transiting Libra. It's not aspecting Libra, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can always kind of harness these energies, okay? You can ask me more about this another time. I'm not gonna explain it right now. But my point I'm trying to make here is that we always naturally will look for the material side of the enjoyment when it comes to other people, okay? We want to enjoy with our friends. We want to enjoy with our spouse or the person our, uh, we're dating, uh, whoever, siblings even can fall. In seventh house, Venus just represents every, every uh, seventh house Libra represents every other person, okay? I know we tend to coin it as just your wife and stuff. It's not quite true, okay? That's just, usually from a materialistic point of view, yeah, it could strongly have a correlation with that, but it, it, it's not necessarily seventh house equals spouse, necessarily, okay? It, it could equal a lot of things. But 
it owns the energy of just other people in general. Okay, so I hope that made sense. Now, like I said, we tend to focus on the materialistic side of things, which it's not a problem, right? Venus is a very big part of our life. But I would encourage you to really focus on the spiritual side of things, which is what? Really understanding your karmas in regards to where Libra is or your seventh house is. Not just kind of seeing what will happen in regards to Libra, the seventh house. Okay. And um, how can we do this? Well, there's two ways we can do this. There's a direct way and there's the indirect way. Or you can kind of coin either one as indirect or direct. But there's the, the easy way and I guess a little bit more advanced way. The easy way is whenever a planet transits Libra or the seventh house, you want to kind of see that when a planet transits a certain area, the energies there are kicked up into high gear in regards to what that planet governs. Okay. So I'll give you one example. Uh, actually, I already gave, I was going to give you the example of Saturn, but because Saturn already owns Libra, I'm going to give you another example. Let's just say Jupiter and I'll kind of tie in the Saturn thing here also. Let's just say Jupiter transits Libra, your seventh house. So what this means is that this is a great, great, great time to become aware of karmas related to other people in this sense. Okay. Now, if you're looking at it from a purely materialistic standpoint, you might just kind of try to, you know, find someone you want and things like that, which is not a problem, but I'll strongly encourage you to connect to the spiritual energy of things and seeing, okay, what karmically do I need going forward? And you can kind of look at your dashas and things like that, or whatever you're going to run and your, some of your other placements and kind of make this assumption. There's no way I can tell you how to make this assumption right now in this video. But it's just one example. Uh, and this is really good. Why? Because Jupiter, its signs surround Saturn signs. And its main sign, Sagittarius, comes before Saturn signs. And its dasha of Jupiter comes before the just a dasha of Saturn. So my point I'm trying to make here is that Jupiter's functioning is very important for Saturn's functioning. Saturn gets exalted in Libra. So in this hypothetical situation, you could say that, oh, wow, I'm going to be, I'm going to really, really get aware of, uh, you know, my karma with others and blah, blah, blah. And then let's just say the next time you run a Saturn period, like whether it's unther, the unther, whatever, or the next time Saturn has an influential transit in your life or something transits with Saturn, like goes to with Saturn, like if Venus transits and it happens to be in Saturn sign, either natally or transit wise, they're going to give somewhat different results, but I'm just giving a general example that now when that happens, you have that better awareness from when Jupiter transited your seventh house or Libra. And now when another planet or that same planet is transiting uh, with Saturn or when Saturn has an influential transit itself, you're more better ready to fulfill karmas with other people. Like for example, if Venus, you know, it, it, it goes into Capricorn, okay? And Saturn's there. Because that Jupiter had transit in Libra um, and you kind of gained that awareness, now you're more ready to fulfill that karma with other people, regardless of any, if anything's in Libra or not, because Venus rules Libra. Um, and now that energy is flowing a lot better. Okay, so I, I hope that made sense. Also, even if it's not Venus um, transiting with Saturn, you can still do karmas related to, uh, work on karmas related with other people. Okay, uh, like if Venus wasn't transiting with Saturn. The reason I'm saying that is because all planets represent other people to another ex to some extent. It's just Venus represents it the most. Okay, please don't generalize certain big things in your life are only really connected to one planet. That's not because there's so many energies that are coming from all the relations in your life. Last thing I will say is that I gave the example of Jupiter transiting Libra. Okay. But you can use this example for any planet, uh, planet, excuse me, uh, transiting, uh, yeah, transiting Libra. Okay. Also, even if no planet is transiting Libra, you can always just through awareness and things like that. Obviously, when a planet is transiting Libra or your seventh house, it's going to be a lot stronger. But you can always um, focus on that energy of being aware of or fulfilling your karmas related to Libra at any point in time. Not just when a certain planet is transiting Libra 
or the seventh house or when there's a certain transit or important natal uh, placement you have or a certain dasha running, okay? You can always kind of do this. And that is kind of gonna be my closing note here for this video. Try to always focus on the karma with other people in regards to however Libra or your seventh house is looking in your chart, okay? Focus more on the karmic duties with those other people, not so much the material outcomes you're gonna get. And you'll notice all your relationships will improve. This is why a lot of the relationships in the modern day and times kind of go downhill because we're always thinking about us. What are we getting? We're not thinking about what do we have to do with the other people, okay? If two people in a relationship are always thinking about what can they do for the other people, it, it's not gonna have too many problems. But if everyone's always kind of thinking about themselves and what they want, things like that, it's kind of going to go downhill. And I could make another video about that another time. But I'll kind of just leave this as it is. When it comes to Libra or your seventh house, just focus. What's your karmic duty here? What can you do karmically or what can you be aware of karmically uh, as far as your wants and needs? Also, because it is Venus' sign, but also um, what you can do for other people in regards to Libra and seventh house. Um, mainly uh, in order to help improve the energetic functioning of Libra or seventh house so you can improve the energetic flow of the whole zodiac belt either from a sign or house standpoint okay so I think that's pretty much it for this video if you have any questions or comments as usual feel free to let me know and until next time I'll talk to everyone later thank you very much for watching